Hi, I'm Cassandra from the Oxford Weaving Studio and welcome back to our Weaving Basics series of weaving tutorials. In today's tutorial, I'm really excited to be sharing with you how to set up a warp on a circular frame. Now, this is a different way of weaving than many of you may have come across, and it's quite a lot of fun because it really opens the possibilities for you to apply all the different techniques that you're learning. So if you like this video, please follow along. Ask any questions you might have at info at oxfordweavingstudio.com. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, and certainly you can subscribe to our YouTube channel because we would love to share more videos with you in the future. So we hope you enjoy this video. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to set up a warp on a circular ring. Now, um, we're going to be using cotton macrame cord. Now, you could use different types of warps, uh, warp threads um, in your weaving, in your warp. But I like to use a non-mercerized cotton. And the reason for that is, if you can see here, it's a thick, strong yarn that doesn't that doesn't stretch. That's quite important when you're setting up a warp. Now, the other reason why we're using a non-mercerized cotton, and that means, uh, non-mercerized means non-shiny, is because the ring here that we're going to use is, is quite a smooth surface. And if you're using a, a smooth yarn, um, it will slide quite easily around the outside of the ring. So the best thing is to use one that will cause a little bit of friction, only marginally. Um, so um, you wanna use a nice cotton, uh, cotton warp string. Now, um, here you see that we're actually working with a lampshade rig. Now these are easily accessible and you can purchase these in the UK online quite easily. Um, or you could use an embroidery hoop. This is another popular uh, frame that you can use in order to set up your circular weaving. And um, another point I'd like to make is these are 20 centimeter rings, these three here. This is a 10 centimeter ring and this is a 25 centimeter ring. And the reason why I'm pointing out um, the different sizes is is because it will depend on how many spokes, we'll call these spokes, um, you want to set up on your frame. Now, um, it really depends, it's a personal choice. Often the bigger the circle, the bigger, the more amount of rings, sorry, of spokes you'll want on your ring. But that really depends also on the thickness of the yarns you would like to weave with and also um, how tight you would like to weave. So the more, this one here, uh, I believe has, uh, 24 rings. So that's quite a lot more than what we're going to set up today. Another point I'm going to make today is that we're going to set up your warp with an odd number of spokes. Um, you could set it up with an even number, but there are different reasons and different argu arguments um, that you could make for, for either case. But we're going to show you the cleanest, uh, which is an odd number. And so we're going to get started straight away. We're going to um, start with the navy blue. Now I'm going to measure out um, just pulling some of this off the spool. I'm going to measure out uh, the width of the ring that you're going to be working with. Now I want to have um, 15 widths across. So I'm gonna count that out now. So I have 15 warp um, widths across and I'm gonna add one extra. I always like to make sure that I've got a little bit of extra and you're going to cut that off. Next, you're going to um, put your yarn into a little um, a little bundle. Now, um, a yarn bundle is simply placing it uh, around your fingers in a figure of eight motion so that you can tidy away your um, your yarn without it getting tangled. It's a great way of handling um, any yarns you have. And the reason why is because we're going to be um, needing to have a smaller bundle to work with rather than uh, sort of, you know, several meters of string. If you couldn't follow along there, uh, I do actually have a weaving tutorial that uses, um, that shows you how to do this technique. Now, the first thing I want you to do is once you've got your bundle, I want you to pull out a little bit of give, a little bit of extra string so that you have a working end. Now, I want you to measure your working end um, roughly half, so the, um, half the diameter and we're going to tie a simple single knot on the outside of the ring, just so it, you can hold it in, in position. Um, now, the reason why is because we're going to want to undo this at the end. So this is the technique. You start off by holding your uh, warp string and you put a finger on the top end just so it doesn't move. And you are going to put your bundle inside the circle. You're going to pull it out on top and you're gonna put it back into the center of the circle. See, we're going around the outside of the ring. Once you have it in that position, I want you to pull it directly across at the bottom and you're going to hold it under tension. And now I'm gonna put my thumb and hold this one 
in position. Now it can be a little bit awkward. You find a, you'll find your own system and way of working and holding the frame for you to work quickly, but this is how I like to do it. So remember, starting at the top, inside your ring, pulling it out, put it back inside your ring. Now again, now we have to measure out the spacing that we want around the outside. And this will come with experience. You just really have to test out how far um, apart that you want to place them. You can adjust them at the end slightly to move them around so that they're even, um, but give it a try and then you go, um, you go from there. Um, this is roughly about maybe an inch and a half, but again, it's, it's approximated. So once you have it on the top of the ring, you're going to pinch so you can hold it un under tension again, put your ring, uh, put your bundle back inside the center and it's gonna go out and around, and I'm going to take that same measurement roughly across the opposite. So you're starting to get this nice little geometric pattern happening. So once it's down, hold the thumb, hold it with your thumb again, and you're going to extend out with your bundle. You're going to put it back in the center and measure out your distance, putting it under tension, coming around, back in the center, and then out and around. And we're going to keep going around the outside following this pattern. So once you've come around and you've gone 15 times around, you're going to want to take this end and you want to match it up with um, the starting point here. Now, what, one thing we need to do before we do that is can you see here that if you look at my spokes, they're currently in a nice little star pattern. And if you look, there's a little hole here in the center. Now, from, from my point of view, this is slightly um, askew. So what we're going to try and do while holding this one still in place is we're going to slowly just adjust the spacing of each of our, um, each of our spokes to try and get that little circle a little bit more centralized. So once you have it more centralized, again, you're holding with your finger at this side. Now you're going to go back in through the center, but you see, I want to go the, I want to go back in between the two that where you started and the, and the last one. And we're going to pull it a little bit tighter to try and centralize this hole, uh, the circle. And then we're going to put it back up and through and around so always under tension so can you see here this is what we're going to do to try and gather it together and and as you see here we now have both ends on the same end and I want you to unpick your first knot and we're going to knot it together if I can get this undone so once you have it undone you're going to put this one under and hold it under tension you're going to take the top one and you're going to hold it under tension and now you're going to tie the two of them together. Now there are different ways of tying the ends so that you can either get a loop or um, a knot. It depends if you want to be um, suspending it, hanging it from the wall with a loop. But I'm going to, for this all intents and purposes, tie a double knot, secure it in place because I'm going to hide the, um, I don't want to have a, a hanging hanging hook I just want to have a knot and then you um, trim off the ends put your extra to the side and now the last thing you want to do is you want to try and center your spokes once again so that will help you to bring everything together nicely now can you see some of them are still open some of them are tight together now um, that doesn't matter because once you start weaving you'll you'll be closing those together and so there you have your uh, how to set up a warp on a circular ring um, so if you like this video, please um, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll find out more interesting videos. You can always follow us on Instagram or Facebook. You can find us at Oxford Weaving Studio. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to future videos.